best wishes for your examination. I think you have already prepared very well <clears throat> for your examinations. So first of all, best wishes and uh, be prepared for examination. And I hope you're doing all the things. Uh, let's have a few important uh, uh, readings, my readings of the talkers and the examination, the way you should be taking your examinations. And especially I will be talking about the physical chemistry and chemistry at large. <clears throat> So students, first of all, the most important thing is chemistry is a very vast topic, a very, very vast topic, vast subject. And at any point of time, you cannot always feel like you have full command over the chemistry. So over the years, for last 20 years, when I'm teaching, I have never found any student to say that I'm totally confident in chemistry. That's an amazing fact. Reason being is this, even you could not be very sure of the mole concept. Sometimes you can, they can give a mole concept a question based on surface chemistry and you have to then and there apply your mind and very pretty things are there small small things are there and those small things will create a you you have to apply yourself to get the answer so in other words you can say the predictability in chemistry is very less so what do you feel that uh, is that chemistry paper is always very difficult if chemistry is such a vast subject and chemistry is so difficult to take on why people say that chemistry is easy and we are always scoring chemistry and if we are not scoring in chemistry then our ranks are chances of a better ranks are always dashed and you should be very very perfect in chemistry so what different strategies should you should adopt for scoring well in the chemistry first of all chemistry is vast and there lies is the you know uh, there is the point if a subject is so vast for example if i take example of a very simple topic, real gas. <clears throat> what you study in the real gas? You study Van der Waal equation. There is another equation known as Bertholet equation. There is another equation known as Dietrich equation. There is another no, equation known as uh, uh, something like uh, uh, so many equations are there of the real gases. <clears throat> Technically speaking, they can ask you about the Bertholet. Idea is this that the Van der Waal coefficient A and B are not strictly constants. Practically speaking, they don't give better results. So the real chemistry, if we really start asking a real chemistry, then you'll have to study the real gas for whole, whole year. So the examiner is very aware of this fact. Chemistry examiner in IT, especially standard examinations, are very aware of this fact that the paper should not be you know, so typical that it is beyond the student. So that is why if you feel like in last 40 years, chemistry paper have always been very sympathetic to the students. You'll always find, for example, and if you just notice bleaching powder, so many times they ask, keep on asking about the bleaching powder. They ask about the H2O2. They ask about the you know hardness of water. So you have ever thought about it that they have never gone beyond the hardness of water. There are so many other things in which real processes are nowadays introduced but they never ask because that will be a kind of a cheating on the part of uh, you know examiner and on part of students as well so believe me whatever you know is more than sufficient never try to now scramble through all the pages and going through the mole concept and all typical cases of hardness and all typical cases of you know what happens when cerium is getting oxidized and what happens when you know all kind of remote things you just leave believe me k 4 k 2 cr 7 oxalic acid, and, you know, probably one or two more oxidizing and reducing agent. But they have been asking this for last 50 years and religiously asking it. So you take any chapter, you take atomic structure. So many things can be asked, but they never ask because they know there is a limitation. Each and every topic is very vast. So first tip is there. Never try to think that paper is going to be, you know, out of box. Chemistry paper is never going to be out of box. Simple reason is this. I tell you my reason for this because chemistry is simply so vast enough that it, they cannot ask out of the box question paper. Okay. So next thing is how to approach. Second thing, if you find in especially in physical chemistry, in many years, papers are very easy. So easy papers are there. You hardly take 10 to 15 minutes to solve all the physical chemistry problem, even though they are calculated. But you will find a definite trend in three, four years time, in five years time, all of a sudden they good, they give a very good paper in physical chemistry. 
how do you define a very good paper in physical chemistry if you remember sometimes they asked at what pressure diamond can be converted into graphite so immediately if that one such one such type of question if you see in a paper you totally understand the point of view of an examiner he wants to understand the deep conceptual part of chemistry and he is touching certain certain things as soon as you find in physical chemistry one or two problems which are alarming like another problem if i ask you if somebody ask you what is the entropy of miscellization of course it is not written in ncert that it is positive of course it is very difficult to conceive that miscellization process is entropy should increase in miscellization process it is very difficult to explain so if as soon as you see one or two or three problems which is out of the box which is requiring concept be very aware that examiner is sometimes asking you standard physical chemistry paper and if a standard physical chemistry paper is there you can feel it so many areas are there they can stretch like in one examination they have asked what is the sole result of the process in second law they asked a very theoretical question is it possible to convert heat completely into work so that time student thought that okay we can convert heat into work because they know in isothermal process all the heat can be converted into work so some students have taken it casually but the real answer was of course heat in a cyclic process cannot be completely converted into work that is the basis of the whole second law so you can judge the mood of examiner by just looking at few questions in physical chemistry and if you find that that they are asking very routine questions of the zero order or first order in kinetics are asking a very simple problem like calculate the molarity or you know you are mixing something and you find the molarity of an acid or base you will immediately realize that paper is easy but never lower the guard if the paper is easy the most important thing if the paper is easy it is going to be a very difficult task some of you are outstanding students many of you are your outstanding students in narana when you are studying you have taken so many papers see that you are very aware of this fact if paper is easy you have some extra burden because it is going to be high scoring match and a very tiny mistake in physical chemistry you are bound to do such mistakes like you know units and dimensions you can take care of sometimes you are not taking the proper value of r or sometimes in a question there are two rs are involved sometimes in a question you know one time you need like 8.314 and uh, the uh, si value of r and sometimes in that same question for calculation of mole you require what the r for 0.0821 there you can make a mistake so in those situations be very aware that what is the most scientific way most common sense way of attacking the problem okay so if the paper is easy the challenge is more but if the paper is difficult what you need to do if the paper is difficult i have also observed that most of the cases like in diamond and graphite problem they asked in 2019 all of a sudden 2018 or 19 i believe students start thinking that i we have never gone through it the formula involved was delta g2 minus delta g1 is equals to delta rv into p2 minus p1 minus delta rs into t2 minus t1 no standard books used to teach it but if you apply a slight amount of brain then you know some students have done what delta g is equals to simply the right p and v2 minus v1 because they know dg is equals to vdp when i met with many toppers after the examination i asked how you attempted this problem most of them said that such three other options are totally totally beyond comprehension so we gone for that most logically looking option so students what i'm saying if the paper is difficult the examiner will be you know benevolent enough he will be kind enough to give you lot of hint believe me you take any difficult physical chemistry problem there will be lot of hints and you have to use that hints besides in numerical grid problem if the negative marking is not there you feel more free so if some difficult problem is there you can have some you know apply your creativity apply your common sense and that time only common sense will you know work out only common sense can help you out try to never think like i i should summarize never try to think like out of box thinking in physical chemistry and in whole of the chemistry once again i repeat because chemistry is a vast subject and if you see my point of view as an examiner point of view we simply we simply understand that a paper should be a balanced paper otherwise people will criticize that you have you are done cheating kind of a thing you have asked such typical questions that nobody can even think of it such paper is highly unlikely and if such paper will be asked 
enough clues will be given. So the conclusion is students, relax, take your time, only, only revise the basic fundamentals. Only basic fundamentals should be revised. It is a test of basic fundamentals. And believe me, if you have studied, you worked hard, you have honestly worked, work your way out, Okay, in advanced examination, nobody can take your performance. So have belief on you. Only belief will work. If you're not a believer, if you're just thinking about all the critical problems where you failed, if you start remembering all those things, your performance will not be good. Okay, remember when Dhoni was going to take a, you know, a very high pressure match, what do you think? Dhoni is going to remember all those things where he was bowled out on some ball, all those failures. No, no, no. He's not going to think about the failures. Failures, he will definitely leave behind, but he will only focus on what? His best time. So try to focus on your best time, the best papers you have given, where your mind worked very well, you worked very fluently, your mind has no confusion at all. So that set of brain, that set of framework is needed for taking on examination. So leave aside your failures. Leave aside all those things where you have scored something like 50 to 60 percent marks and you are very frustrated. Okay. Remember only those things where you have performed really well. Okay. My interaction with the toppers, I tell you, so many interactions I have done. One thing I amazingly find, those who are at the top of the table are very cool-minded. You know, they are not extraordinary. They have just taken the paper very well. Once again, I repeat, they are not extraordinary. I have experience of vast experience of dealing with the toppers. I'm teaching from 2003, at least, you know, three, four times I have, I taught AIR one and many times here, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. In all those interactions, I remember the topper always have been, you know, very difficult, very, very, very different and very cool minded. Sometimes I also find some really, truly deserving toppers I have seen. Those nobody can take the performance out. They come something like 13, 14, 20, 25, 30. That kind of ranks they have scored. Sometimes I even found that they have scored something like 300 or 400. But nobody can take nobody can take the performance out of them. I found them very successful in the life later on. So don't worry about this. Don't take that burden that somebody is going to shoot you if you're not going to at the top of the table. Just enjoy your time. Just enjoy your time. Never think like it. Never take that burden on you that I'm going to be the topper and then somebody will come and they will just take us on our shoulders. And you know, Okay? No, no such thing. Think about it. You're enjoying that paper. Go in the very normal framework of mind. Take the life easy. Take these three, four, five days, two, three days, whatever you have. You know, Sunday's examination. Take one, two days. Very relaxing manner. Only remember the good things and go on take the examination. That is the way you should be. It's the overall strategy. And in chemistry, once again, I repeat, this time I guarantee you, paper is not going to be on you. Never try to go and search for what is the formula for heat of neutralization? What is the inside, uh, entropy of missilization? There is no need of doing that. What is happening, sir, that exceptional case? In what cases there is cis elimination? In what cases there are trans eliminations? Believe me, no such specific questions are going to be asked. Only common sense based questions are going to be asked. That is it. Okay. So, so many students I have seen, like you all are toppers, try to believe into your own method. If you feel like it, that your strong point is then this, and you are going to just crack that paper, believe in that. That's my message to you. Some practical points are always there that if you have already done one third of the paper in 30, 40 minutes, and that is going to fill your heart with a lot of enthusiasm. So later on, you can score very well. That could be a point of view. If you believe that general theory is that, is, is this that try to solve the simple questions, that's very good. But you know, some students are there. They try to figure out only difficult questions or mathematics part they, they take first. And they are so confident in mathematics. It depends on your level of preparedness. Suppose if somebody is so confident in mathematics that a very difficult mathematics paper, he's a very specialist in mathematics. He cracked that maths paper into, you know, 40 minutes or 50 minutes time or maybe 60 minutes time because he's an expert. His expertise level is that he will definitely do that. Okay. But generally speaking, if I say statistically speaking, then, you know, maths and physics paper requires some reading, requires some diagram making, thinking, 
because they are not straightforward because they are focused paper why they are focused because the chapter is very focused very few things are there so when if very few things are there in the chapter theories is very less then of course the combination they are going to make out of it will be deadly but on the other hand then the chemistry what is happening the theory is vast you start counting the theory part portions you have studied in the chemistry that is numerous so that time what is going to happen naturally the paper is going to be easy so statistically speaking you will find chemistry paper to be relatively easy so that is why if you take me and statistical data so i would say that 50 to 60% students i probably believe go for the chemistry first they finish it very neat and clean and if any questions are there which require some thinking they leave it for some later time maybe if they get some time after physics and mathematics they will come into this one okay so already if you take a general paper solving i have found another case where a student has not attempted mathematics he has taken on later on and the mathematics 6 and 7 questions of mathematics were just routine everyone has done this so just avoid that kind of a blunder that question number 51 52 53 54 55 56 is such a routine question and any one it is illustration number 1 or 2 so j is very unpredictable examination what you need to do keep your cool take a long deep breath this is the test of your coolness it is not test of your knowledge believe me i repeat it it is not going to be the test of knowledge whatever knowledge you have you are all equal now it is the test of you know coolness how cool you are remember any high pressured match who is going to be the winner why dhoni was considered to be a best captain because he always kept his cool he always kept his cool there were so many brilliant players they could not kept their cool so the cool is this don't burden yourself with the stress of you know i have to score number 1 and all this leave aside go and play your game just another paper have this thinking that i am going to love this paper this is one paper i am going to love this whatever it is and if you have ability it's not only the it paper number 1 it is the life which is going to judge you one day you can perform in an examination very well but if you are not really the performer you are not going to perform well in the life so think about it it is just under examination go and play your match okay and think about it believe me believe in yourself is the most important thing have you studied have you studied the concept well have you put on lot of on, long hours yes uh, what are you doing for 2 3 years you are constantly working day in and day out you are better than everyone else think about it in this fashion you are better than everyone else and go and enjoy your paper so that is the message from my side best of luck fill your heart with lot of enthusiasm fill your heart with all positive things and paper is going to be damn easy believe me so after the paper we will be talking believe me paper is going to be damn easy keep your cool that is it okay bachcho so best of luck take on the examination with full of full of enthusiasm